In this example, we're going to derive the rate law for the oxidation of nitrogen monoxide to nitrogen dioxide. And here is the summary reaction that we're working with. And the proposed mechanism for this reaction is given by these three steps. The very first step is essentially an equilibrium, and the second step is the formation of the products. So we begin by first checking that the proposed mechanism in fact adds to the summary reaction. So we write the uh, first two steps as an equilibrium and then add in the third. We find we get some cancellation and in fact the overall reaction is in fact the same. So we're good to go. Next we write the rate of reaction in terms of the species in the summary reaction and there are in fact three. So if we, f we can focus on any of these to derive the rate law. Now it's clear what our intermediates are. Zen 2 O2 does not appear in the summary reaction but is present in the mechanism. Next uh, we want to have a look at the mechanism and see if writing or deriving the rate law from any of these particular species is uh, advantageous. So uh, let's first have a look at looking at the net rate of change of nitrogen monoxide and we see that uh, nitrogen monoxide is formed in the reverse reaction of the equilibrium and destroyed in the forwards reaction and so we have a 2 for both of these because there's two N2Os in both cases. So it's twice the rate. Okay, and then we look at uh, O2. We only have, it only appears in one reaction only, and that's in the final step. And same with nitrogen dioxide. It appears only in uh, one step, and that is in fact the last step also. Okay, so looking at these three, uh, we need the intermediate in all of them, but uh, the last two at least only have one term, whereas the first one has two terms, so picking e either of these looks to be slightly more advantageous, less work, so we'll just start with focusing on the net rate of change of oxygen to begin with. So here's what we have so far, this is the summary reaction, here are the Here's how the, the rate of reaction uh, it relates to the net rates of formation of the chemicals in our overall reaction. There's our mechanism, and that's our identified intermediate. So, first of all, we want to know what the concentration of the intermediate is, so that we can then solve for these rate laws. Uh, and uh, if we look at the mechanism, we see that it's first formed in step one and destroyed in both steps two and three. So that's what we have, formation and then destruction. It, we are invoking the steady state approximation, so we set that to zero, and now we can solve for the concentration of N2O2. Okay, now that we have this, we can substitute into the net rate of change of oxygen. And here's our expression for the net rate of change of oxygen. It, it only appears in this last reaction here. We're going to substitute for N2O2, which we just derived at this point. Okay, we do that and we arrive at this expression and we can see that uh, if we want to relate it to the rate of reaction we just need to take the negative of this net rate of change and there it is, there's our rate law. Okay, maybe we didn't pick uh, O2 to look at to get the rate law, maybe we decided to go for deriving the rate law based on the net rate of uh, formation of NO2, so we'll look at that now. In fact, we see it's very closely related to the net rate of formation of, of oxygen. The only difference is instead of a minus here, we've got a plus 2. Okay, so we substitute in for the intermediate, and we do that, and to relate to the overall rate of reaction, we notice that we have to multiply this by a half. So we do that. And there we go, we've got the overall rate of reaction and we get exactly the same rate law as, as, we, as we should. For completeness, let's say uh, we'll derive the rate law based on the 
uh, net rate of formation of nitrogen monoxide, okay, and uh, we, we note that that was slightly more complicated because it has two terms, okay, so we substitute in for N2O2, and we do that, but now we notice that we have a, f a fraction here, so we're going to put it on a common denominator, right, and then we can factor out the common terms and simplify to obtain this result and to get the overall rate of reaction we notice that we have to multiply by minus a half over here so uh, we do that and again for the, we also get the same overall rate law so it of course doesn't matter which chemical we decide to focus on to obtain the rate law so it's always best to choose the the chemical which appears at least appears to be the easiest okay there is one interesting question here. Uh, if we look at this rate law now, what if the concentration of oxygen was very large? Okay, so we've got a complex rate law here, but if the concentration of oxygen was very large, then we will note, or at least expect, that probably this term here, right, ends up being quite a large term. And the concentration of oxygen might be large, say, if we were thinking of this reaction uh, in terms of a pollutant, NO being a pollutant in the atmosphere. So of course oxygen is uh, quite a high percentage uh, in the atmosphere, whereas NO is just very small amounts. Okay, so uh, that that's quite that's a possible realistic scenario. Uh, this this term here is could very well be very much greater than this particular term here. Now if if that's true, then this term will be tiny in comparison to that and so we can approximate this rate law now to this expression and we find there's some cancellation going on and the rate law reduces to this which is uh, the more usual type of rate law uh, it's overall second order and second order in nitrogen monoxide so the complex kinetics now reduces to this expression in our next example, we're going to look at this uh, particular reaction again, but we're going to have a think about rate determining steps. And if there's a very quick and uh, way of writing down a rate law once we know that a particular step is slow, very slow. Okay, so that's all we have in this video. Continue to the next video to f find out how to deal with rate determining steps in reaction mechanisms.